farm because you're all trying to fall back to your own jungle. You're like, wait, you're farming this jungle camp? I was farming this jungle camp, and there's no recovery. So, but if you're winning and you get to play on the enemy's half of the map, the greed does work out. Like TA Kunkka playing aggressive, Naga just dealing with their entire own jungle, right? Then that's when the greed kind of pays off. Well, for those of you that are just tuning in, maybe you've been watching some of the other streams, maybe, you know, you were showering because you were stinky. I don't know. But welcome to the stream, everybody. <laughs> We've got one game left here of this evening. It is Aurora game number two versus Tundra. As Aurora had a very solid game one performance at the moment. We're going to see if uh, Tundra can get a very much needed win as Western Europe is having a rough time so far these first two days. Yeah, patch C, I don't know. Mixing things up. Western Europe has been really strong for a long time, so it's good to have a little bit of a mix-up every now and then. It's pretty exciting to see. At the same time, we've seen why the Western European teams are so good over the over the last year, that they, they adapt usually pretty quickly, and they're all strong players, so I wouldn't count them out yet. Yeah, not by any means. There are still games to be played, but ooh, a little bit of a pause. Okay, so one thing I, I want to theorycraft here, Lauren of, mm -hmm. on this mid TA, chances are we're going to be looking, uh, I, I mean, it's, do you go the early Blink Dagger? Do you go the Dragon Lance into Blink Dagger? Do you go the Dragon Lance into Deso? Like, is that kind of dependent on the lane, or do you need your TA to start bringing momentum? Hmm. Man, I'm not sure what they want to do. Because here's another thought to add to that. One, we've seen Lorinoff doing really well. So if yeah. he's feeling it, why not give him a lane counter hero like TA versus Puck, right? Then the next thing is, we were really impressed with how well Aurora was stacking last game. We went back to look at it. They had 20 stacks uh, in that game, which actually, to Tundra's uh, you know, own credit, they actually also had 18 stacks. So there's a lot of stacking in that game. So in that sense, like I could see TA getting in some getting in some farms i i don't know how he wants to approach it like do you get early active or you're like no i'm gonna i'm gonna play greedy we're gonna farm we're gonna find space for it i don't know well as we head on into the lanes we will see how this ends up playing out um i feel like this first level for templar assassins not great but you end up doing okay especially once you get to more points in the refraction but Doing just fine. We creep yeah, dragon we here. Is this what's going on? What is going on in the top lane right now? Yeah, we're seeing. Uh, we're, well, this is the third lane of Dota. Dude, Topson is almost <laughs> dead. <laughs> this is this is what you do against Undying. Sometimes you you do really really strange lanes to avoid the lane counter that is the Undying. Pure just can't see us under the tower as Luna. He doesn't have any points in his abilities. Like, wondering of going either like Lunar Blessing or the uh, Lucent Beam. He will go the Beam to try and secure last hits. So, a little bit of a rough start for him, but yeah, he'll be okay. Now, this is the benefit of, uh, of Luna. You get through this weird part, you get some Moon Glaives, you'll be jungling. Yeah. But this is more to how much can Kunkka and Snapfire get out of this against this Undying. I like this. This is a fun lane. I like what they're doing. Bottom lane. We're going to see Nine Class and Kasane get aggressive onto Ollie. The level 2 power spike is enough. A net coming out from 23 as he will chase down Nine Class. Get the exchange kill. So nicely played. The, this is the second time we've seen that level two timing immediately with a centaur partner make a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice kill for them. But I think 23 might be okay with that because he actually gets the return kill and that'll just Solo speed up speed. his own timings. Well, we'll see how it ends up playing out. He's doing pretty decent on CS. It's, Jab's right now struggling a little bit with all the lane shenanigans that have been happening top, of course, but uh, I think they'll be able to. It's a, a bit oh expected. Gosh. Whitemon actually very close to going down there. Q holding that blood grenade, and uh, he was still holding a second uh, point in an ability, and he sees that tombstone come out immediately because he sees the cookie. So Q 
In trouble himself, he will fall. Nice torrent out from Jabs, trying to bring down Pure, but does not have the damage to finish it off. But uh, the Lucent Beam spam. I see it run down. One more second. I mean, three seconds, two. I'm right, just okay, going to go ahead the Lotus. take the Lotus. Nicely played. Dude, it was funny. Uh, Snapfire was holding the point for a while there as he hadn't seen a tombstone come out. Right, both of them holding to see what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And brought the south to Jabs, though. So Jabs could have been in a bad spot being that low. But now we'll we'll just be back to regular laning, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Q is going to get to his level 3 here uh, in pretty soon. And with that, we'll see the Tombstone have a lot less uh, effectiveness once Little Shredder is online. If he even decides to die, you could always just max the Scatter Blast. But I'm, this is one of those games, I think you might be okay maxing Little Shredder. I think you should at least get the one point for the laning stage. Beyond that, I'll leave it up to him. I'm down for either, but I think Scatter Blast makes sense. Yeah, he's got this one point in Little Shredder now, so he's chilling. Dude, they could just turn aggressive on a white one. And Q, he's thinking about it, dude. He has just been clicking this guy over and over. A little bit of a courier bait there as well. I feel like all these other lanes are static, man, but this top lane is... Someone's going to die. <laughs> it's action-packed for sure. Uh, the mid lane is slowly tipping in the way of Loranoff. We, we see this a lot like as TAs pick up the levels in Refraction, Side Blades, all that. It just becomes so hard for a low armor hero like Puck, who only has burst damage. Naga Siren, however, in the bottom lane will just get ran down here. Most like the arrow, no way! Ollie, what a play. Threads the needle there. They will turn around with the stomp as well as the uh, Earth Spike there. So they do end up finding a kill. And Nine Class, he's still wanting to look for 23. Oh, he <gasps> oh! almost gets driven. It's <laughs> very close to a drive by. He's from... got this. He's got this. Yeah. He's got him indeed. One more auto attack. Well done. Maybe you did want to die to the Roshan. Yeah, that might have been better. That would have been so funny. He's just like running away and Roshan comes out of the pit and is like, uh, nope. Tombstone down. Q turns around, Ollie. instantly gets it. And now Pure needs to be careful. Instead, they'll just set, turn their attention to bring down this Undying. And Marana will die bottom as they just... I mean, she just TP'd back, right? That's a brand new death. Yeah, there was a big creep wave, so they chose to just dive, knowing that Naga had just died. Now Naga's here. They got to make sure the same thing doesn't happen. So and smart choice is sending the illusion. Uh, they're just going to be able to chase him One down more? to the tower. Q tanking up a lot of the tower shots here. But yeah, Jabs gets the kill again. All right, these side lanes are sick. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's getting, uh, we're getting all over the place. Naga needs a little bit more to feel calm. I mean, she could, but she'd like a little bit more before she had to go jungle. But this tower's about to fall. She's getting kicked out of this lane. Well... Twice now, we've seen Kasane have a really strong lane on the Centaur. We'll see if he can transition it here as he's got that Veil queued up. Uh, maybe he goes for the Shivas early. Maybe he goes back for the Blink Dagger. You know, we'll have to see. But right now, you have to worry about this TA who is starting to have a lot of fun in this mid lane. Level 6 now will have traps kind of spread all over this lane, making it very difficult to gank. And also gives him some kill threat as well. Top lane. We're going to see them go on to the Kunkka here. The rotation in from 9 class. Jabs not quite level 6. Does hit the torrent, but he's walking right into White Mon. A great cookie out from Q. There's going to be a nice arrow to connect, but do they have the damage to finish him off? The tombstone comes down. Q will instantly try to clear it up. Nice deny from Pure, but Lord of, he's under an invis rune. They're going to have to be able to stampede to safety. A nice use of that first centaur ult. Oh, the scan, the Radiant's like, guys, they might be trying to snipe our uh, Wisdom Rune. Good attempt. They even TP back on Jabs, so. And Kasane having such a good lane shows an immediate benefit to the other side lanes with that Stampede saving, saving Pure's life there. I thought for sure they were being sneaky with the, the Invis TA. Jabs? Ooh. He's looking for pure, but will not find him. Obviously, they have uh, several heroes still here in the top lane. I mean, X Torrent into Arrow, right? It's pretty easy if you can hit it, but obviously on the offlane, you're going to have the more points in the Tidebringer for now. 
bring uh, some traps to try to get the rune nine class needs to be careful about these he's got two full duration traps bottle will be picked up here on thompson but he's just gonna try and bring down the lion and he does <laughs> with hits. ease just three hits no problem he's gonna done? be forced to pop the haste good haste away i think he might have actually died to the yeah the physical damage if ta if he gets hit uh puck's actually doing a lot better than i thought i thought he should do in this lane yeah, he's having an okay time, but I look at net worth and I worry that this Templar Assassin is just having too good of a time. Level 6 now available for Jab, so they're going to smoke to the top side of the map here and see if they can maybe find this Luna, but instead Whitemon will be the one that breaks the smoke instead. Arrow right down the alleyway. No real way to dodge this one out. They have a cookie. And they're just looking to try and bring him down. Great cookie up onto the high ground. Pure is here and waiting. No points in the Eclipse, but you're now walking into jabs. And do they get the vision? He's looking for the X. He does, but a great silence from tops and it makes some space, but he's just going to walk right into Lorna. There's going to be the stampede, but you can't get away from that. Beautiful rotations out from Aurora. All right, we're going to have to see when Kasane decides to join in. He built the veil. Looks like he's going to get the blink. He's going to need to help his team out a little bit, but it is a bit hard to just run in with Stampede. We're seeing him use it defensively, so maybe cool. trying to farm his blink before coming into too many of these fights. Kunkka does have an XTP if he wants to refill, and it's very possible that he will, but for now, they might just be tossing him a salve. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're just going to salve him up. Does not want to be uh, without a TP for right now. Net worth very even. I mean, 10 minutes into the game, it's it's neck and neck. Only about a, a few hundred gold advantage on the side of Aurora. Mostly just because of the centaur. Like you were talking about, Kasane has not left this bottom lane. He has just been farming up a storm here. Now, this kind of play would usually be very good to prevent the enemy carry from farming well, but that is... A benefit to the Naga Siren, you still manage to find farm in these situations, but it's not as much. Naga would have liked to have an even better lane. I say that, she's like near the top of the net worth for, for the last hits anyways. Um, a little lower because of the kills and the deaths. But she's finding the farm. She's finding farm. So the question is, like, when will Centaur join in with his own massive amount of farm? Yeah. And Pure needs to be very careful, right? You're starting to get more levels on this Kunkka, which means more range with the X marks the spot. And <sighs> there's so much follow-up, right, to the Kunkka. It just, it's really either just a Snapfire ult or just an arrow from the Marana, and you're probably going to find these kills. As Marana, once again, stacking up this triangle. Something that uh, we've seen Aurora have a very uh, good time doing, so... Next to your question earlier, TA did decide to go Dragonlance first and then has a Blink queued up. Okay, I like this uh, build actually a lot. I think the Dragonlance into Blink is a... You, you don't really have to get the Deso right away. This just gives you some some good playmaking ability. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they are smoked up. If 23 Savage gets a, a, a root onto this yeah, Centaur and the arrow to follow, it ends up hitting a creep and with that, Kasane tries to get away. But yeah, there's just too much magic damage. And this is a really good kill. They needed this. This is a massive find. And meanwhile, Jabs, he's caught nine class on the back side. Cookie on forward. Will be able to stun up this lion as well. He tries to escape, but three points in that Star Storm is enough. It's a fantastic kill to find. That Centaur is just trying to farm up uh, that blink before joining in. And he's only a few hundred gold off. So... That is a great kill. Otherwise, he'd probably have it right around now and then start joining in. Yeah, I mean, this arrow, if it hits, is is even worse for them. But it's just, that's the ease of, like, being able to bring Snapfire to one of these rotations. Like, it's, there's almost any lane that you can bring it to, right? Like, that, it's so sick. Yeah, I think it's the really nice thing about picking up that Naga Siren is that if Marana only has one hero to play with, it's kind of obvious. Like, okay, don't go near Kunkka, and it doesn't matter that we don't know where Marana is because how is a hero like Juggernaut, for example, going to set up for Arrow? But when it's Naga and you don't know where Marana is, like, both sidelines have to be really careful. 
Yeah, and we're gonna see Puck, I think, have his Witchblade completed. It is, so Topson now has some decent damage output on, uh, output on this hero. As we will see, this is level six is picked up from both supports now on, on uh, Tundra. And I mean, they've struggled, right? They haven't been able to find a lot this game as Topson does need to be careful. Oh, able to dodge out the arrow, so nicely done there. Jabs does have a blade mail, though, and they need to be very careful. They just jump everything on top of Thompson. Just gets almost completely destroyed. Will be able to jaunt away with the orb, and a great stampede comes through. They find the snapfire on the backside. Great rotation in from Kasani, and a good blink reveal at that. Good stun catching the Marana as well, but do they have detection? He might just burn down the run buff as there he pops his stick. He's trying to maybe find a kill on a nine class. He can't do it. Q goes down as well. Three for zero. A beautiful find here from Tundra. I'm surprised that Aurora pushed up that far. Maybe they just didn't see it deliver, but the blink tire actually delivered in front of 23 and then Kasane walked straight to the twin gate. <laughs> Song of the Siren out, 23, takes the Wisdom Rune and TP's home with a fraction of a second on the host stomp. It was literally mid-cast. So very, very, very close. A cheeky little play from him. Obviously, he's taking that Wisdom Rune away. Is, uh, they kind of need that XP. It's a great steal since his team just lost that fight top. You might as well try to get something from the other side of the map. <gasps> Lauren off, deleting Topson potentially. Dude. Wow. Uh, has the amplify damage still on the I bottle? I think if he so. activated, he got one attack off. If he activated it, I think that, that might have killed the puck. Yeah, this is where things get scary, man. You don't have high armor he heroes on the side of Tundra, and eventually this TA will have a Desolator. Now, I like that Kasane is going to go for a fast Shivas this game. I think he'll need the armor. Yeah, I agree. Where we had on jab. So he goes blade mail this game, going for the Aghanim Scepter next. I mean, the blade mail, we saw Thompson almost killed himself on that with his spells, right? The Between the Witch Blade as, as well as his Illusory Orb, nearly ends up losing his life. But uh, it gets scarier and scarier as the game goes on. Naga finishing the Manta has an Orchid queued up. Orchid will be really good this game versus the Puck. The support. I'm gonna smoke and try to find this Kunkka bottom, I think. It's a nice rotation right through that portal. They do have a good ward placed on the other side. But Jabs, he's walking into the night vision from Pure. So they've got him. Chain stuns shouldn't be an issue. They've got the finger of death as well, and they will commit it. So fantastic kill. Nine class. <laughs> Gotta be careful about that blade mail, buddy. And that's without the blink from nine class. It's coming out now. That's great. Tundra's got a lot of tools to work with right around now to make some space for, for pure. Got a little bit of a rough laning stage, but he's he's catching up in farm, yeah. bringing himself back up to the top. I mean, this game has been very close. the the high The highest net worth lead that we had was like two and a half thousand, but. For the most part, I don't think either team pretty upset with the state of things. Kasane goes in, does get a nice stun here onto Ollie. Just immediately pops the Moonlight Shadow to get away. And Ollie going to use that to roam towards mid as they're like, all right, well, eh, let's use the Moonlight Shadow offensively and see what we find. And they're going to find Pure hiding in the jungle here. Potentially, Jabs actually gives himself away with the uh, phase boots active. A little bit unfortunate there for him. Yeah, just not quite enough. Uh, he actually, had, I think he had the range for X marks, but he doesn't have the night vision. So he keeps seeing the, the Luna at the edge of his vision, but in the time it takes to cast the X marks, he's breaking the vision. So yeah, yeah pretty unlucky on that. Otherwise, that would've she, been a great kill. Yeah, she only saw him because Jabs popped the phase boots as he walked up onto the high ground and her bonus night vision saw him. Mm -hmm. It's like, otherwise, if he just kind of walks up and doesn't use that, they probably find the kill. Meanwhile, mid lane, nine class, pulled right back into an arrow and a Mortimer kisses. Talk about an easy pickoff. That was Mortimer's kisses though. So they're gonna smoke yeah. and go mid. That Mortimer's kiss is a lot of that early game damage. So long as they play around the TA who is a lot of physical damage if you're close to her. Yeah, Thompson does have that blink dagger completed now as well. Uh, Kunkka, 
He's going to get pulled back from his ex, but he's taking a lot of damage there. Yule's queued up on Puck. That'll be a great way to deal with the silence coming out from the Orchid later on and to maybe mess up some of these X plays. Yeah, absolutely. He does pop the smoke with this, so that is actually a, a nice little play there from Lornov, is, or from Jab, sorry. And uh, with that, I mean, Aurora are able to continue to kind of farm up on their side of the map. Yeah, Desto's almost done Deso? on TA. Oh. Yep, there it is. <laughs> I was like, just thinking, yeah. I was like, that's got to be the item they're looking for. But Lornov is right under a ward. And another smoke from Tundra as they're looking for this Templar assassin. It Dude, is a he's actually so that lucky. camp is in there. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same Thank thing. I'm like, if that camp is alive, he is super dead. I was, this is the, the benefit of the greedy draft. Jabs farmed it from him. <laughs> <laughs> Saved his life. Wow. Small little things. I like that they're playing behind this ward. They know something's up. Like, Tundra has been missing on the map. Nine class goes in, tries to find a stun, an immediate Moonlight Shadow, and jabs. He's like, I'm okay to tank the front line, but a great tombstone onto the high ground. I don't think you want to fight into this one anymore. Well, maybe they do. That's the Desolator from Lorna. They clean up the tombstone with ease as both supports go down. They might go for an early Roche. You can maybe for they'll wait sure. for it to it's come. Moving bottom. Maybe they'll wait for it to come down here. So they'll just push up, maybe try to take this tower. Well, actually they're falling back. Nagasaren has found the puck with this Orchid and Thompson should survive. He's just putting a little bit of damage out. I don't think you need the Naga for the Roshan, but looks like they want to just fix lanes, I suppose. I think TA and the little shredder negative armor is enough, and then you just either have the arrow stun or just Kunga tank. I think they'll be they can definitely do it whenever, whenever they want. Very important D word there for Q. That one has given a lot of information to Tundra. So we hit the 20 minute mark, both tormentors will be up. I mean, you can take it very easily on the Templar Assassin still, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to do something like that. TA has trap silence. It could be very scary for Puck. Who yeah. is uh -oh. still... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, God, get out of there! Yeah, okay, Tundra <laughs> realizing they cannot do it. I was like, I see Tundra's supports start to fall really low, and I look over at Tormentor, and I'm like, uh-oh. That's not happening. Need one more person for that. All right. Would be a great shard to pick up. Save nine class some money, uh, potentially, but he'll have his own shard queued up anyways because it is very good versus Naga Siren, like you mentioned in the draft. Yeah, he's going to need to have it. They are scan or they are smoking towards the bottom side of the map. I mean, they know Roshan is, is the objective right now for Aurora. It is... The set, I mean, that's two scans back to back on the pit. So they're trying to find something, but it's going to be a smoke on the side of Aurora, and they're just going to potentially bait this one out. They get their own scan, so they know. Tundra's coming down here. This is a brand new Shiva is completed on this Centaur, a big item for him. Yule is on the way too. coming out for Puck. Yeah, they've got some nice timings. The real question is who's going to find who? The silence from these TA traps could potentially catch someone off guard. I really like the positioning from the Kunkka and this TA. Like, they're just saying super far back. And he's, he's just going to go ahead and start the Roche, potentially. But... This is so tense. The, uh, Manta. Not 23s. He's just going to go top and spawn Manta and come back, I think. Yeah. It's like, that's actually just what he's doing. He's just going to try and split push and keep this pressure. But he's a little bit afraid to come back through the gate. All right, now he's going to come back now. I think he's just trying to decide if it's worth his time. Like, should I just start farming? Like, how long are we just going to stand here posturing? Yeah. I mean, both teams can cut lanes very easily, right? You have the Naga Siren with her illusions. You have the Luna who can do the exact same thing. 
As Jabs does have his Aghanim Scepter now as well. So that is going to be a massive pain to deal with at the Roche Pit. And Lornov's going to go back on in. Try and do what he can here with this double meld strike. The arrow connects with the little shredder. I mean, it's a lot of armor reduction, but can they kill it before Tundra actually find their way into the pit? And 23, he might throw a song at the Siren kind of uh, early to try and make some space here as Lorna's still trying to work on it. It's down to about half HP. It's not enough. Oh, it stepped out of the pit. So now, now Tundra knows. This is the longest standoff I've ever seen for the first <laughs> Roche at 20 minutes. Oh, what a Huge stop! Kasane goes in and finds three! They're gonna lose two immediately, and Mortimer kisses off the deck as well. They have buybacks. They will lose the Undying inside the pit, but what an initiation from Kasane. Double buybacks. They know they cannot afford to give up this Roche. As Lorna Roche is still sitting here on the backside, the Roche is very low. They have the Song of the Siren at the ready. They could use it to snipe the Aegis away. And they're thinking about it. The TPs are coming through. Tombstone's almost dead. 23 from... T he goes for the song. They're trying to finish off the Roche. The Mortimer Kisses are there as well. They will get it. Lorna grabs oh, the Aegis. Really nice. But they just lose 23 for this. He's just gone. And now they might actually be able to chase Lorna here. He's got these traps in place. Trying to just slow oh, them just down. Off. But he needs help. A cookie will get him maybe some space. Here comes Kunkka, actually. Wait a minute. Maybe he stayed a little bit too far. The Blade Will comes out of the BKB from Pure. He's going to turn his attention on to Jabs. He's got the boat. He's got the Torn Storm, but he dies again. Oh, boy. Tundra, they don't mind. You get the Aegis, but what a massive win for them in terms of the map. That was such a cool posturing. Like... That is something we could look back on and just like analyze in a bunch of different ways. Both teams trying to figure out how long do we stay here? How do we split the map? I don't even know how he knew to stomp back there. Maybe just maybe caught a sight of them or guessed like that's where they'd be positioning. But that stomp was insane. That won them that entire fight. We will see it here in the replay. Oh, no, this is the, the escape. Yeah, I mean, I think what happens is they kept like inching their way down that side of the map and at some point you just guess you're like there's nowhere else that they could be right and maybe he got a glimpse of one hero but the fact that he hits a three hero stomp just completely obliterates aurora's ability to take the fight and it's like both your supports are there are hiding back there waiting to set up for a kill and suddenly you just can't do it mm -hmm. and you know you get out on templar assassin but you lose your naga siren your naga siren who pops this you know song of the siren to try and get yourself into that aegis but oh my goodness this ollie here Ooh, double leap barely gets out he saw the ward get placed so q will clean that up radiance middle tower is under attack well, they did get the Aegis for it, so let's see what they can get done with it. There's three minutes left on it at this point. It was a very costly Aegis. Yeah, it was indeed. I mean, it's, yeah, like you said, there's still three minutes on it, and maybe Lorna will put this to good use, but you have to be a little bit worried about this uh, Luna, right? She is becoming very strong, and she's queued up that Conda. One of the like two or three heroes in Dota that can actually build this realistically, and it got buffed for some reason in the last patch. So, well, you don't Here think we Naga can build Konda and proc it with Net? <laughs> well, that'd be pretty sick. <laughs> All right, looks like we're pushing up to the tier two tower. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Put TA on front with that Aegis. No, oh, Morno just trying to chip down this mid tower. He's in a pretty good position though, right? Good ward behind him. He's got traps placed here, but they're gonna uh, kind of settle for the easier to take tower, right? This top one. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, they've got the vision. I think they have a feel that Tundra is on the bottom half, so knowing that Tundra will have to walk up through here through this ward, could give them the vision advantage on the fight. Also, this tower is gonna melt to this Deso anyway, so it's really quick movement up here. All right, tier one mid for the tier two top as 
Pure is going to continue to kind of barrel down this mid lane as the Conda is coming on the Courier right now. Okay, Kisane, I don't know who bought it. Nine class bought it. They do have a gem. And this is really big because one of the ways that uh, this TA could really break this game open is that, oh, here's a lion just standing on trap, you know, silence him, delete him. And you just find a couple pickoffs like that, sets you up for the rest of the fights. But they're being careful. They're moving as a group with this gem to clear out the traps and try to protect supports. This amplified damage rune bottom is very sick. Record will grab it. That's a big one. They're escorting this wave. They know this puck's nearby. They, uh, they do not want to give this wave up. They want to try and bring down this tier two mid. And we're going to start seeing Tundra maybe back a little bit to deal with this. White Mon in the trees will get found. And uh, you're not going to live very long here unless you don't have detection. Dust comes out, but it's a little bit too late. So he's to safety. Lord of just blinks in aggressively and will lose his first life. They don't even get the Undying. They need to get this Tombstone, but your Snapfire is nowhere nearby. And now it's going to be the Naga Siren in trouble. She pops the uh, Song of the Siren, but the BKB from Pure just destroys her. And Lorna will TP on home. Ori, oh, not going to make it. Ollie will not make it. And by God, that Lucent Beam damage is very scary now that he has his 20 talent. I think they thought they could get a quick Undying kill, but instead it just baited them in into a uh, yeah the rest of the fight the huge stomp no creeps there to eat up eclipse i think so just they got destroyed there on that fight net worth actually doesn't look that bad but it is a little concerning because your carry naga like a good chunk of your damage comes from the illusions and you're gonna lose a lot of those illusions to the lion every single time dude that lucent beam from pure did 670 damage dang Good thing you can only throw that out every four seconds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, TA picked up Adesso pretty early. She's only been able to get two charges on it, or four in total, but. Yeah, they are definitely on the back foot now. Like this Luna is way too strong for them to fight into. They don't really have a clean answer to this hero. Once her BKB comes out, you kind of just have to kite it off, maybe, with, like, the Song of the Siren, hope you can just run away. But in this last fight, we see 23 Savage. They just stampede onto the Naga Siren, and he can't do anything. Like, they just collapsed on top of this hero. He's working on the Bloodthorn. So, I mean, the damage is there for Aurora. The hard part is... Like, the X into arrow stuff works early on, but now that BKBs are in, Yules are in, like, now the catch is the hard part for Aurora. That's very true. We're going to see Q pick up a Blink Dagger. I think in this last fight, I kind of... It was kind of that moment where, like, you see the Tombstone go down, and your Snapfire had no ability to close the gap and get in there and help, and you just lose the, the fight so easily. Mm-hmm. All right, we got the <laughs> things are reversed from last game. Now Aurora cutting creeps with the Naga Siren, trying to mess with the uh, the Tundra's plan to push up. They are going to be able to get this bottom tower. Who's going to be their hero to clear out all this? Do they have the travels on? Uh, not, no, not on anyone. We so saw. Have a... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, they're just going to have a harder time dealing with the ratting than uh, we saw from the last game where Leshrac, I think, had um, the boots of travel, and then they even had the Kunga for the X plays. Yeah. So that could be one way that Aurora looks to get back in this. Just just Naga the enemy, the pub classic. Yep, absolutely. And earlier today, we saw Quinn on this puck. Ooh. And the arrow connects. I think they know they're up there, but we saw Quinn on this puck actually scale incredibly well, being the highest damage dealer in that game. And Thompson is getting there as well, right? He's got the Maelstrom done. He's looking for the Aghanim Scepter next. Lauren up hiding in the trees, gets the blink away, but jabs. He needs to be careful. He gets caught up onto the high ground. The boat, I didn't even see. I yeah, well, was where invisible. was that? That was very what? strange. Did it stun uh, the, people? I feel like I didn't even see it. I think it sunk itself before it got there is what happened. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, that was very strange. 
But yeah, I mean, Kunkka dead. Duh. I mean, he was so close to his BKB too. He's, he's 40 gold away at the moment. He has his buyback available and the Naga Siren again, trying to split push and slow this down, but they just go onto the high ground. They managed to get on top of Q and he doesn't get a chance to pop the Guardian Greaves. And he did buy out for that brand new Blink Dagger. So you do not have Mortimer Kisses available or your tombstone killer for this next fight because just goes in aggressive again he's like whatever i'll, I'll go on to this templar assassin i don't care Thompson needs to be a little bit careful those side blades hello they're doing a lot of damage and naga cut the next creep wave so they should be good for a little bit they did lose their tier three they won't lose the barracks yet uh they're gonna have to cut the again he's got to send illusions over before he misses these actually these are the manta illusions so they're lasting this whole time all right which ones are these who knows? <laughs> There's actually a way. Pop quiz. How many illusion models are there in the game? Uh, that is a good question. Three? Is there three models? Four models? That's far too little. Really? Wait, okay. What do you mean by illusion models then? Uh, so like Manta's blue, but there are other illusion effects in the game that will have slightly different colors. For example, PL has a yellow illusion. Yeah. Do you know how many of those are in the game? Dude, no way. I have no idea. There's seven. What? I mean, Terrorblade has his own too. Terrorblade's got one. Oh yeah, Roche. Roche got taken. Very exciting. Back to illusions. <laughs> PL has several on his own. He's got two... Uh, two different kinds of illusions. He's got like a solid yellow and a light yellow. I like that. Uh, to reveal the strong illusion, there's like Darkseer Wall, Terror Blade, Grim Stroke, Normal Punch. There's a bunch of different illusions. Look at 23 Savage here. He is, again, just doing his best to constantly split push and cut these waves. And it's exactly what we saw last game, right? They have one wave coming down top, Centaur. Escorting mid as we're gonna see Kunkka potentially. Oh, he was gonna try and go for an X play maybe, but there is a watcher that scouts him. So 23 Savage is like, fine, I'll do it myself. Spawns more illusions. Even felt like he had to get his own BKB. That's pretty rare for a Naga Siren. I mean, I think that might be right, honestly. It, it we saw in the There's last fight, if they control. stampede him, he just dies. Yeah, yeah, he needs it. And a lot of his illusions are being killed by Drain anyway, so they're finding the real illusion. Might be in trouble here. <gasps> Wait, I don't think he had night vision to see that. Oh, that was close. That was so close. I mean, you're kind of stalling out this Aegis. There's still three and a half minutes left, but they haven't started taking the high ground and Lornov is still kind of farming on the map here for this TA. Cut a couple of... Oh, he's going to go for the Tormentor steal, actually. I like this. This is actually pretty nice. These catapults. They're yeah, going to ruin the, these. the Radiant base. Radiant oh, okay. You actually get Tidal Wave here for Kunkka. This is actually neat. A reposition mechanic here to maybe pull these heroes into the base. So they will see the Ward Sentry here dropped. And Q will go up to try and grab the Topsin. Playing with them a little bit. Kasane in the mid lane does have a BKB, gets pulled back. The X actually doesn't, they missed the whole combo. Mortimer Kisses are now down, but they get the Lion. At least Kasane blinks back in. He has to pop the BKB. The damage out from Lorna is substantial. His jabs, he's looking for more. They get White Mon a big high ground tombstone. And now the time to retreat here is they do not want to go further, but that is the Ags here from Topson. Song of the Siren has to come out from 23. He pops his own BKB on the run. They've managed to get away for now. And now Pure, you can't TP X. with an X, my friend. He's in trouble. The backside of the fight. 23 takes down the Undying. The dream fight here for Aurora. They've managed to take down the Aegis, but Jabs, he's got to get out of here. Can you get the Luna twice? He's got nothing left in the tank to stomp off the mark here from Kasane, and they have done it. 23 and Lorna just dumping in the damage. Four dead from Tundra, and you get absolutely nothing. Topson tries to get the gem back, unable to do so, but he's in trouble. He's got a Yules for a moment, but the trap to silence trap him up. Silence. Can he get out? Oh, Ollie, Ollie almost kills goes down. <laughs> More traps to try and reveal him. He will get to safety. He gets to... He gets the TP on out. All right, all right. That is still an amazing fight from Aurora. Uh, wow, that I did not think they'd be able to do that, actually. <laughs>
<laughs> Starting off by just killing off Lion. Lion just died right at the very start of the fight. Couldn't couldn't uh, uh, remove any illusions with Mana Drain. Like, stuns all lost. Uh, Centaur right next to the Lion. So lost half his health. Felt like he had to back out. By the time the rest of the heroes come in, it's, it's essentially like a 3v5 at that point. Yeah. And 23 Savage is about to have a Hex. So you now have another item you have to definitely worry about. Like 23's solo potential pickoff with just a Bloodthorn is huge, but add a Scythe of Vice into that factor, these supports cannot live. Like the saving grace is the fact that Nine, Nine Class has a, you know, Ogre Seal totem and White Mon has a Force Staff. You can't do that anymore. Yeah, and I think we, we pointed out this BKB on Naga saying you don't usually want to do that, but I think she would have been in a lot of trouble during that song if like Absolutely. Eclipse could have been hitting her. So the fact that she lives through all of that, Luna feels like, oh, I got a TP out, and it's like, oh no, there's a conk I forgot, you know. And then she had to, she wasted a bit of time channeling her TP, and then had to like try to move again. By that point, it was too late. That was literally the dream fight from Aurora. I mean, this game was so close. They were actually about. 2,000 gold behind, 1,800 gold behind before that fight. Now have a 8,000 gold advantage. Yes, they're missing one tier three, but they've defended their high ground completely. The Naga Siren has now overtaken the Luna for the first time this game in terms of net worth. And it's with some seriously scary items. Yeah, can't take it too easy yet. 11K feels good, but at 40 minutes, it's not the end of the world. Uh, if you take a bad fight, Luna still does an insane amount of damage, especially if you get some good Glaive bounces. So Aurora, really well executed fight there. They got to keep that up. You can't can't get uh, can't get sloppy, mess it up. The next fight we're likely to see is around Roshan. I imagine both teams will be very careful and posture around that. And looks like uh, Tundra might be the first in position here, but it's still two minutes off before it can even begin to spawn. So I don't know if this will matter quite yet. Yeah, we will have to see. I, I still worry that this Puck is going to be a, a very scary hero. I mean, we saw how much damage he was able to do with just his coil hitting the two heroes there. The fact that they couldn't capitalize on it, though, was the best case scenario for Aurora. If they're able to turn that damage around and, and pick off like the, the Naga Siren or the TA there, it would have been huge. As soon as he has his 25 and you have that Dream Coil piercing spell immunity, it's a different story. Those heroes do not get out. Having said that, Snapfire is actually already working on a really fast Wind Waker, which could be a way to help Ooh, protect herself like or her teammates who get coiled. Could also waste a clip duration, so very cool pickup. I wouldn't be surprised if we see maybe like Ollie also get one later, but uh, <laughs> there's only so much gold on the map and he's going for a hex, so uh, might take a while. One. That'll be the third scythe as I believe Jabs is, well, he had one queued up. Uh, decided to go back, so he's gonna. He ended up picking up a, a what looks like it's gonna be a Lincoln Sphere instead. So, that's interesting. Maybe just not wanting to get insta hexed. Maybe you throw it on your TA or something. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that's. Disarm protection. Mm, maybe. I feel like it he's is just literally just like protection. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, I feel like like the idea behind it is like you give one free spell tank like soak to you, whoever is going up onto the high ground. Mm -hmm. But that's gonna be about it. They will have again the ability to stay bottom here. Is we're gonna potentially see the longest standoff once again. But <laughs> twenty three is top lane here, and he's about to finish this tier three tower, and he can continue to cut mid pretty much indefinitely. So Tundra will have to deal with this. Ooh, 23 was going for a ballsy play. He walked in to see if Thompson would would jump in into the instant vice bloodthorn. That would have been a dead puck. Orna gets caught from the hex. Can they get him out? Stun comes through. They have the stomp as well. Nice torrent and a four staff to safety pure. Needs to be a little bit careful. Kasane gets caught from the X. Will he BKB? No, not going to be forced to do so quite yet, but they continue to chase as the, the Naga Siren's here now and the tombstone's been cleared up. White Mon. That Flesh Golem's starting to tick down. They're going to continue to hold that position on the left side here, and I think that's correct, but no BKB spent at the moment. You just have to wait out. Well, as you say, wait out for Roche, but it was a quick spawn, and with this Bloodborne, with this TA, they're trying to bring it down, and quickly, the wraparound from the left side here 
Can Tundra get in in time? The smoke's gonna pop. Ollie gets the leap away. They dodge it out the Roche. The Song of the Siren perfectly done. The Aegis hits the deck. There's gonna be the Refresher as well. And a Scythe with an arrow catching. Immediately they got the Luna, but can they get her out? She's gonna pop the BKB, try and stand her ground, and she's healing up so much thanks to the Satanic. Lorna Huge still coil. has an Aegis. A great coil on to three, trapping the whole side of Aurora. Jabs on the run, can't get out, but a great Torrent Storm nonetheless. And Lorna V's back with a vengeance here to clean them up as Income Storm did the damage from the Luna. Just clears them up. Five dead on Aurora. You're kidding me. What is, how does Pure do that? I didn't even see him pick up this refresher. I thought he was dead there, but he pops a second BKB Satanic, goes straight to full health. Man, this this back corner, I can't believe there have been so many fights back there, but Tundra is the king of the bottom right corner of the map, apparently. Dude, yeah, I did not see that refresher either. The second Eclipse combined that with just so much damage from that shard and, of course, the just the glaives bouncing around. That is absolutely wild. We'll take another look here at the so arrow. Well. Yeah, it does. The Hex onto Luna, but they didn't have another stun after that. If you could just chain stun up the Luna there, I mean, <laughs> of course, right? Simply chain stun the carries, but the fact that she gets her first BKB off, has that refresher ready. Like, this part also looked really good. Like, I thought they were gonna get her. That's where that second BKB refresher, uh, Satanic all comes out, and she actually just cleans everyone up back here. And this is, I mean, that whole fight is set up on the back of Thompson's like three hero coil right like we talked mm -hmm. about the fact that this this puck hero starts to scale if that coil doesn't connect it's a completely different fight and mid lane kasane gets the blink out nicely done while we were watching that replay tundra just takes up two sets of racks tier two protecting the top one but they don't really have too much of a reason to stop they might just keep going here Dead well even actually in they, yeah they might want to play it safe get that refresher back up but, well, I say that, they look like they're still up here. The Naga Siren, one of the downsides of this hero is, yes, you are very far, but you are always starved for experience. Only level 21, as opposed to the 26 on the Luna, right? So, you, you would like to have that 25 talent, but you're just so far away. Both teams doing their best positioning here. They, I mean, if you're Tundra, I feel like you still feel pretty confident sitting behind Pure, but they will scout and amplify damage here with this Courier. So I, I honestly would like this on Topson, but he doesn't have a bottle. It seems, oh, he's already he passed, tossed it, he over, passed it over. Yeah. All right, refresher for Kunkka now as well. So double water park, double ghost ship. It's very disruptive in these fights, of course, but how much does yep. Conda Lucent Beam do with an Amplify Damage Rune? My guess is uh, probably like 1,600 damage. I'm ready. Let's see. I feel it. like it actually is 1,600 damage. Lornov's queued up the Divine Rapier. It's time, you you might get your wish, but they've actually caught him instead. Can they get him to safety? The Song of the Siren there. Will allow him to reset, but look at the damage from this puck. Lornov forced the BKB. They're gonna be able to clean up the Tombstone and they do 23 on the backside. Looks for the line, he gets him with the net. Is he have the damage? He does it and now 23's on the run. He just gets stomped on down. They're gonna have to buy back now on your Naga Siren and a clean disengage potentially. Cookie on forward does catch Kasane. They get him on the arrow as well, but this guy's sitting on 5,000 HP. Can they do it? I don't know. Pure the Amplify damage up onto the high ground. He's looking for his opening. Conda something for me. I gotta see it. <laughs> Please, one of these creeps, do it. No. <laughs> All right, really nice fight for them there. The uh, Naga forced to buy back as well is very scary for Aurora. Uh, if they find another Naga kill. That's it, that's game over. Yeah, I mean, they managed to get that, uh, 
you know, Templar Assassin out of danger at the start of that fight, but Kasane is so damn tanky now, especially with this, the Halberd and this Ogre Seal Totem. It's like, even if you can get on top of him, he's able to survive. But it's also the fact that Lion just stands there against that Naga Siren and doesn't die. Yeah, I think that Glimmer bought him a lot of time too. I don't think I don't think he had vision up that far, so that kept Lion alive. Maybe it looks a little different if he kills the Lion, but um, yeah, great, great use of the Glimmer Cape. Two of them. Well, they did manage to get a creep wave all the way to this bottom tower, so maybe they can start doing some damage here. Q really desperately trying to get to this Wind Waker, and I think he actually has the mana or the money for it now, so he might go for it. He is still gonna have buyback, just barely, but he's got the Mystic Staff at least. Gotta be careful about this hop. Yeah, there it is. They managed to go on top of the Kunkka. They just burst him the way! Wow. What a find! And now 23, he TPs in. He's forced to BKB. The Hex catches the Luna, but again. She's got that Satanic at the ready. Forced to BKB, will back away for now, but nine class on this Lion. Oh, he blinks in, gets caught from a silence. Nice go, Scepter. Still holding on to the Aeon Disc as well. Tundra want the win. You can feel it. They are so damn close to closing out this game. I think they're still gonna be I mean, it's so scary. If you throw one fight, TA Naga in your base, I mean, they're going to equalize it immediately. So Tundra trying to be really, really disciplined with this approach. But I think if they keep it up, they will They will get there. The lanes are always pushing in their favor, even with this Naga Siren trying to cut as much as possible. There's a Roche banner trying to help them out as well in that bottom lane. It's a little far up. I think they can move it a little back. Where is it in the bottom lane? It's like right in front it. of where the tier three tower is. But I, I think they're trying to get the maximum value of the 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 buff duration, so the creeps make it as far as possible. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. It's just a little more at risk of being killed. The thunder's not really playing down there, so. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. See, Lorna might be able to force him back. He's got creeps here. Definitely a free tier two. Dyer's bottom tower. I mean, anything at this point amplified is a win. damage rune. Dude, that is that is wild. That is the rune reset into an immediate amplified damage. I think they're gonna go with this. Well, Roshan, Roshan's about to spawn. Maybe maybe they play it safe, grab Rosh. Lornov's going the divine. Uh, he's a thousand away from the buyback, but he just buys it out. Locks it, of course, before coming Let's back go, to the base. Let's go, Lornov. Divine rapier done. Boots in the backpack. Maybe he finds the opening. They grab 23, but can they get him to safety? The Wind Waker blade from Q. That's what you want, but can you bring down Pure? He's got to get out of here on 23, but the coil, it snaps. It doesn't do the damage, and now the tombstone's gone. Song of the Siren here from 23 Savage. It does get them to safety. Puck. Actually, might need to be careful. Do they have the hex? They don't. Not in time. 23 is forced to pop that second BKB. Try to get the safety. A second Song of the Siren to reset. Everything being spent here from the side of Aurora. I don't think they have anything to follow up from this. I think they'll just let Kasane Luna slowly... just goes in! He managed to get on top of him. They managed to get on top of Lord of the Big Win. The Rapier hits the deck, and that might just be it. Topson will clean it up, and Tier 4s will fall. All right, slowly that nothing. We'll it. just end the game on Tundra. Yep. I mean, they, they haven't called GG yet, but they finally will. Where'd that Divine go? It's on Thompson, on the puck. Oh, nice.